Y'all, we need to talk about Gigantamax. In my opinion, the rollout of this feature could be done so much better. The way this feature is being rolled out is alienating a huge portion of the player base and of the Pokemon Go community. Why not make Gigantamax accessible to everyone, not just folks with super high level powered up Pokemon and not just folks in super populated dense cities. I believe that there are ways that we could be including both newer players as well as rural players in these super hyped up big releases such as Gigantamax. But right now it feels like we're leaving some of these players behind and that doesn't feel good. I'm personally super excited that Gigantamax is coming to the game. I loved Sword and Shield, and it's been awesome seeing some of these Sword and Shield Pokemon and mechanics come to the game. But when I talk to some of my friends who are either new to the game or live in a place with not many players, they're not excited. So that makes me less excited, and that doesn't feel great. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the decisions that Niantic is making that's causing me to feel this way. I'll give some concrete examples about game mechanics and restrictions that I think are contributing to these feelings. I'll also offer some solutions that I think could make this better. I am heavily involved in my local Pokemon Go community. I'm a mod of our local Discord. I also run, manage, and build a global community of Pokemon Go players. And of course, I'm a Pokemon Go content creator. So while I don't have all the insights behind the Niantic curtain, I do think I offer a unique point of view. So before we get into all that, let's go over the event details. I will be playing this event despite my criticism of it. I'm excited to get out there this weekend and do a bunch of Gigantamax raids with my friends and local community. Gigantamax Pokemon will be debuting in Pokemon Go on Saturday, October 26th at 10 a.m., running until Sunday, October 27th at 8 p.m. So this is a weekend event only, two days only. During these two days, the three Kanto starters will be appearing in Gigantamax battles. These battles will be six-star battles, so they'll be very difficult. We'll be seeing Gigantamax Venusaur, Gigantamax Charizard, and Gigantamax Blastoise in six-star max battles. We also know about two other Gigantamax Pokemon coming into raids this year. Gigantamax Toxtricity will be debuting at the Wild Area event coming up later this November. Eurogamer also accidentally leaked that we're going to get Gigantamax Gengar on Halloween. And while I could not find an exact line in the Eurogamer article revealing these dates, it does seem like Gigantamax Gengar is coming this Halloween. So that's a total of five Gigantamax Pokemon that we know of. There are 32 total Gigantamax capable Pokemon in the Pokemon universe. Gigantamax is not the same as Dynamax. All Pokemon are capable of Dynamax, but not all Pokemon are capable of Gigantamax. The 32 Pokemon that are capable of Gigantamax undergo a drastic appearance change, and they also get a special G-Max move. So at first glance, Gigantamax coming to Pokemon Go, it seems super exciting, right? But when you start to dig into the details, it gets less and less exciting. I am a competitive person, so naturally I love playing games at a high level. I love challenging content. So when I heard six star max battles, I was excited. But making these raids local only adds a big wrench into that excitement. The Ditto Base Discord is a global distributed group of Pokemon Go trainers, all sharing in the love of Pokemon and building a community around that. So with these local only events, we can't really share in that excitement the same way we could with remote raids. Our Discord is almost a thousand members and we can't work together to defeat these Gigantamax raids. And that's a bummer. Players from around the world are connected via these digital communities in places like Discord, Facebook, Reddit, and more. Why not bring these groups together both digitally and in person? Even with my local community, which as I mentioned, I am very heavily involved in. I'm out in person for raid hour every Wednesday, for almost every community day. We had a group of seven players in person for Mega Mobile Raid Day playing the full three hours. But what about that one friend who's out of town this weekend? Or the other friend who has a family obligation and can't come out? All of a sudden, they're not included in the event. Finding five or 10 minutes to step away and do a remote raid makes you feel included. So even if you're not able to be there physically like you normally would be, now you're still part of the event. You're part of the group, you're part of the community taking on these raids. So not only are we alienating these remote communities, but we're also alienating the members of our own community locally. Now I understand that coming out and playing in person is part of the core ethos of Pokemon Go. Exploring the world around us, making new friends and new experiences is what Pokemon Go is about. And I absolutely love that about this game and I don't wanna take that away. So are there ways that we could incentivize these in-person raids without alienating everyone else? Could in-person raids offer more rewards at a reduced price without completely cutting off everyone else? Oh, sorry, you have something to do this weekend. You can't make 
make it into town? Well, I guess you can't experience Gigantamax. You'll just have to watch me post my catches in the local Discord. That just feels wrong. That feels against what Pokemon Go is about, bringing people together. I fully believe there is a way to design these systems in a way that is more inclusive, more accessible, not just to my friend in the UK, my friend in Germany or Finland, but also just to my local community who have families and obligations and can't make it out in person to every event. Furthermore, I believe there's a way to do this without going against the ethos of Pokemon Go and without hurting Niantic's revenue. Just to make this abundantly clear, I highly value the in-person communication, collaboration, exercise, face-to-face -face human contact that Pokemon Go encourages. In no way do I want to take any of that away. But I think with some fundamental changes to how Niantic releases some of these events, we could make all of the things that Pokemon Go stands for even better. In this day and age, human connection does not stop when we get in our cars and go home. We're playing this game on a smartphone that requires a constant internet connection, for goodness sakes. So why are we pretending that we only communicate or hang out with people in person? I do believe that being in person with somebody is the most valuable way you can bond and communicate with them. But as such, it's also the most rare. So I feel that we should meet the players where they are. We should encourage good behavior, things that nurture us as human beings, like face-to-face -face contact, experiencing the world, getting exercise, having new experiences, meeting new people. Let's encourage all of that without discounting all the rest. So as I alluded to before, can we reward players for being in person without completely excluding everyone else? Niantic kind of does this already with remote passes, right? Remote passes cost more than your premium battle passes. So you're being rewarded for doing raids in person because you're spending less money. But could we double down or triple down on this? What if in-person raids had better rewards, more candy, more experience, or how about better IVs? What if the IV floor was higher for in-person raids? What if premium battle passes were even cheaper than the remote raid passes? Please don't make remote raid passes more expensive than they already are. Let's not take away anything that we've already got. Instead, give people more. Niantic has to make money. I get that. Niantic is a business. They have developers, engineers, designers, managers, etc. Those things are not cheap. I am a software engineer myself. I understand the cost of building an application is astronomically high. I have no problem giving Niantic money. So to the degree that I am a software engineer, I do have some empathy for Niantic. I'm sure there is context information that I'm not aware of that make my recommendations here not fully informed or a bit naive. I don't have hard data on how I make the most money from a mobile game. So there's a lot that I don't know. But what I do know as a community builder, as a local community player, as a global Discord admin, I know that I want to play the latest, most exciting Pokemon Go content with my friends. I want to share in the excitement of a new release of Gigantamax with everyone, not just the five or six people who are gonna be able to make it out this weekend. So my last idea to help make these more accessible besides allowing people to remote these is to give us a range of difficulties. What if six star Gigantamax was just one of three difficulties? What if we also had five star and four star Gigantamax battles, but maybe those Gigantamax raids had less rewards, even including maybe worse stats or a lower IV floor. So if I want the best rewards and the highest chance of getting a Pokemon with good stats, I'll do the six star max battles if I can. But if I'm not able to do that, I don't get a free handout, but I'm still able to play the event. Let me know in the comments what you think of my suggestions here, what you think of Gigantamax, and if you're going to be playing this weekend or not. I'd love to discuss this with you in the comments down below, or if you want to hop in the Discord at discord.gg slash dittobase, we can continue the discussion there. Like I said, I am going to be going out for Gigantamax raids this weekend, and if you're going to be going out too, you'll probably want some good strategies to take down these incredibly challenging raids. So let's go over each of the three Kanto starters. We'll look at their weaknesses and some possible top counters so you can take these Pokemon down. Gigantamax Max Venusaur has a type of grass. This makes it weak to fire, ice, flying, and psychic. Because only Dynamax capable or Gigantamax capable Pokemon are able to be used here, we have a limited selection. We have two fire type Pokemon, Charizard and Cinderace. So I recommend finding your best one or two of either of these Pokemon and evolving them all the way to their third evolution and then making sure they have the right attacks. So for Charizard, you're gonna want Fire Spin and Blast Burn or Overheat if you don't wanna spend an Elite Charge TM. For Cinderace, you're gonna want Fire Spin and Flamethrower. Metagross is also a possible pick here. It does have a Psychic Fast Attack Zen Headbutt. 
And remember your Dynamax max move takes the typing of your fast attack. So with Venusaur being a grass type, making it weak to psychic, you wanna make sure that Metagross has Zen Headbutt. Gigantamax Charizard is a fire and flying type. This makes it weak to water, electric, and rock. My top counters here are naturally gonna be water Pokemon. We've got Inteleon with the moves Water Gun and Surf. According to Pokemon Go Hub's DPS charts, Inteleon does have higher DPS than Blastoise, but Blastoise is my second pick here with the moves Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. Moving on to Gigantamax Blastoise. Blastoise is a water type. This makes it weak to grass and electric. Top counters for Blastoise are gonna be Rillaboom and Venusaur. With Rillaboom, you'll want Razor Leaf and Grass Knot as your moves. And then with Venusaur, you'll want Vine Whip and Frenzy Plant. We can also take a quick look at Gigantamax Gengar here, which has been rumored to be released on Halloween. Gengar is a ghost and poison type, making it weak to ground, psychic, ghost, and dark. So top counters will be Gengar. Gengar is gonna be a good counter against itself. And we are getting one star max battles, ghastly one star max battles starting this week. So definitely do some of those, try and get a good ghastly so that you're prepared for Gengar coming up later this month. Metagross, as we mentioned, has some psychic type attacks, so that's another good pick. And then Greedent has a dark type move, Bite and Crunch. So you could build a Greedent here to take down Gigantamax Gengar. These Gigantamax raids will cost 800 max particles, and they only use up the max particles if you successfully defeat the raid boss. So I plan on trying these raids with less than 10 people, and if we can't successfully take them down, we'll have to make some calls or recruit some more folks to help us beat them. This does mean we're not gonna be able to just do as many of these raids as we want, without paying some money. So save your max particles on Friday. Remember we have an 800-ish collection limit per day. So that way you're going into Saturday with a full bag of max particles. Do your first Gigantamax raid and then re-up on the max particles by collecting them from power spots. This will let you do two, maybe three Gigantamax battles for free. If you wanna do more, you will have to buy a max particle pack from the shop. You could then do another free one on Sunday if you wanted. So thank you for watching this video and listening to me rant and ramble a little bit about Gigantamax. Let me know if you think this criticism was worthy, constructive, or anything else, I'm happy to hear some feedback from y'all. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.